guys, this is Nikki in Niagara coming to you from Niagara Falls, Canada. And welcome to vlog number 20. Wow. <laughs> 20. This is my 20th. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe it. Wow. I am not a person who sticks to things very well. So um, I think I've done it with this. Um, I'm comfortable with it. Everybody seems to, the feedback that I'm getting is all positive. Nobody said I hate your vlogs. <laughs> and if you do, let me know because if you're just being silent and I'm entertaining, I'm not entertaining anyone, then I need to know. So don't be afraid to give a, a what do you call it? Um, positive criticism. <laughs> there we go. Say it nicely. Uh, but anyways, yeah, uh, I'm basically kidding because I know you guys are enjoying this uh, from the feedback and um, it makes me feel really good to know that uh, you allow me to uh, enter into your lives for an hour or two. And uh, so today I am continuing to work on this picture. So I've got all the background done and I've got all the aliens done. So right now it's at what I call the ugly stage. I kind of think that uh, most art reaches an ugly stage before it starts to get uh, beautiful. And that is where I'm saying this is now. It can only get better from here. <laughs> The uh, red aliens ended up being way more than I thought it would be. Uh, this page is a little bit different than the other ones because um, the, the other ones don't seem to be... Well, I mean, well, let's take a look. Well, no, I guess there's a ton of aliens in the mall. They just don't... They just don't look like it. And I guess it's kind of... Yeah, some of these uh, uh, look like an animal, but they're really an alien. Yeah, so I guess it's no different than the others. But, um, yeah, I think that next time when I do the aliens, I will do their clothing a different color. I'll, I'll do them mainly in red. Like, this guy doesn't have any clothing on, nor this guy, nor this guy, nor this guy, nor this guy. But, um... Well, this guy's got a shirt on, and, um, there's more. <laughs> I think maybe there isn't. I thought there was a lot more. Okay, well, this guy's got, it looks like it's a suit of armor, but it may not be. So I guess there really aren't as many people with clothes on as I thought there was. Yeah, no. Hmm. Oh, yeah, well, this guy over here, he looks like he's wearing a suit, and I did him different colors. So I used three reds. I used my main red, and then I used a dark and a light so that I could uh, put a little bit of uh, variation into them. And I, I actually used a gel pen back here, too, because there were some, there were some creatures way back in the shadows that were just li white lines. So, anyways, today I'm going to do the spaceships, and um, do you see how I'm? Do you see how I am doing this page? It looks when you look at the picture to begin with. It's like, oh my goodness, how am I going to color that? Well, you just do one thing at a time. I started with the trees and the grass, moved up to the bark on those trees. Then I moved to the sky and then I moved to the pathway. I didn't even notice that before until I was working on the grass that I realized there was the path going through it. And I think it shows up pretty well now that it's colored. And then I did the aliens. So and because I told you before that I decided I was going to do them all the same color. Like the video I saw somebody do a long time ago. 
I didn't I saw it recently but they did the video a long time ago so I, I don't know who it is or was so I've decided I'm going to use the metallics for the spaceships we've got this big one here and then as far as I can see there's four up in no oh there's a couple of little teeny ones but there's four major ones and a couple of little dotty ones there don't think there's any spaceships in the in the picture proper but I'll have a good look through that when I uh when I get there. So I've decided to use the metallics and uh, as you know I'm using the Artezas for this uh, for this book. Arteza has uh, five yeah they have five uh, metallics. They've got gold, silver, and copper of course and then they've decided to add a, a blue metallic and a purple me metallic. So why they chose those two colors I don't know. I think that if it was me I would have added a pink metallic you know kind of like a rose gold but uh, yeah those are their two colors and I've decided I'm going to do the ships silver and blue. There should be enough contrast between those colors and then I'm going to use ash black as a, a shading color. Ash black is the same color I used for the shading on the path. So that will tie it in. Um, the blue is like a different shade of blue than the sky, so they're going to be close together and hopefully uh, there'll be enough contrast between the two shades, but they're similar. And uh, So now I need to uh, sharpen them and we will get on with the picture. So how was your weekend? I guess, oh, I guess I should tell you that today is Wednesday that I'm filming this on. And, uh, weekend was okay, but Monday and Tuesday haven't been very good. I was in a lot of pain on Monday, and then yesterday I was just absolutely awful. I was... Crying. I was in so much pain. My legs, oh my goodness. They were hurting everywhere. But on top of that, my feet were swollen. So if I stood on them, they just, oh, it felt like they were going to tear open. So yeah, I wasn't moving around too much. And as I said, when I did, it uh, was tear worthy. So not a good day. I, I didn't sleep well in the night in between there, Monday night. But today I've woken up and my feet are a little bit swollen. The right one in particular, it usually is. I think I'm going to start with the big one. I can kind of get my, gather myself together. I think maybe we'll do the bottom of them blue and the tops of them silver. So yeah. So I'm going to go in, well, no, let's start with the legs. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how my week has gone so far. But I'm glad I can uh, get this up on, that I can do an entry here. I'm not sure how long it'll be, but um, how's it going? I think I'll just kind of zoom in a little bit so that you can follow me. As I'm coloring, I'm just straight coloring. Uh, I'll do undertones in the uh, with the shading when I get to areas that are already shaded on here, like here. Oh, and you're gonna have to excuse my hands. Uh, it's gonna take a while for this to come off, but I just reminded myself today why I don't use ink sprays. <laughs> I had it all over everything, including my computer, my laptop. So now my laptop is decorated with green shimmer spray. So yeah, I like I'm like using ink sprays as watercolors. I don't like spraying them. I always make a terrible mess, and that was one thing I. I did very little of in my mixed media work too and 
yeah, reminded myself why. Now I've got a little bit of shading on there. Whoops, there goes my point. <laughs> yeah, you don't want, you can't, you don't want to sharpen your Artezas to fine points because they are very soft. I'm really enjoying coloring this and as I said I'm straight coloring it and um, you know if you have something like this and and you know you're not much of a pencil person but you, you want to try it actually I should have done a little bit of lightness around there so it will blend in more um, so straight coloring is the way to go because um, there's nothing wrong with straight coloring. It satisfies me. And I have, uh, I, told, I told you last time about how I had uh, conquered, well, not exactly conquered, but um, learning to conquer my heavy hand. So... If I find myself getting down here and then I come, I come back up, go back up to closer to the end. And you honestly have more control of the pencil when you're at the back. At least I feel I do. You can move around more. And when I straight color, if I've got, uh, if I'm doing a big enough section, I will work in layers, just going back and forth, rather than pressing hard to get the dark color this way. You just kind of go at it until, until you have what you want. So these are not incredibly metallic, but I do see a sheen to it. Like I do see a little bit of sparkle every now and then and there's a sheen and I think that's really all that metallic pencils are supposed to do they're supposed to be like shades of metal because they're metallic you know they're not metal so it just has the two legs or does it have a third one back there somewhere Just has two legs, so oh, just making sure I'm on screen all the time. Uh, yeah, so we're having some nice, beautiful fall days. The sun is out. Um, it's in about the 50s. I pretty much stay home all the time anyways, so the corn this the the quarantining is uh, not much of a change for me. Our town has um, we're ha we have the highest numbers than we've ever had since this COVID started here. And uh, our town has uh, put a lot of restrictions back in place. Um, our entire province, it's the law to wear a mask inside any public building. And there are some, there are more major restrictions on the big cities. But here in Niagara Falls, we get a lot of traffic and a lot of people are thinking that they can travel to uh, come have a holiday here in Niagara Falls. But we can't. Oh, you know what? I forgot this guy's hand. So that's why it's a good idea to leave your pencils or your markers out to one side. Don't put them away after you use them or else you're going to find yourself wondering what color it was you used.
a big city. So, yeah, so, um, the, uh, premier, that's, like, the leader of the province. I don't know, I don't know what you guys call that in, in the states, what the head of your state is called. Is that governor? And, uh, what was I trying to say? Oh, yeah, so we're being told to get with the program or else those ex those restrictions are gonna are gonna be put on us so now this is where most of the shading is coming into this now so we'll see how it, how it works now I need to do light so what I'm doing is I'm pushing hard over the shaded part and then I'm going back because I forgot to like shade out from it a little softer so that it'll blend so one of the things that they're doing here which is new uh, I just read about in the news yesterday was that um, restaurants are only serving locals so you have to you have to show your ID if you go into a restaurant, you know, to sit down in a restaurant. And um, I don't know if that's the bars too, but um, there aren't a lot of bars here that are not restaurants also. So, I mean, there's only like the clubs, which is different. I don't... I don't, I don't even think the clubs are open, because, I mean, how can they? All right, let's stop and do this section down here so I can see how it works to go over the black. So, yeah, that's, um, that's just how it's going here. But like I said, it doesn't personally affect me because I don't, didn't go outside much anyway so it's just kind of like everybody's living my life <laughs> right now but that's enough of that because I don't normally talk about COVID on this channel but just thought maybe I should address some of it as it's real life So I'm debating on whether I should buy Jade Summer's new Kawaii or Grade Scale. Whether I should buy, well, not whether I should buy it because I am going to buy it. Even though I bought the line art when it came out, but I, I actually, I'm collecting their Grade Scale. There's, I, I have every single one of them at this point, and I don't want to not have every single one of them. Oh, you know, oh no, that's a cloud. Okay. I was thinking I'd missed some sky. But it's amazing when you're working on a detailed picture like this how you can uh how you can uh you find little bits that you missed when you're working on other parts. And they're gonna stand out at the end because they'll be the only thing left that's white and uh I'll see. Though actually the eyes and the teeth on these guys, I'm just leaving white. Unless they have irises, then I color those in. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. Let's just go a couple more layers here to give it a little bit more of a sheen. Oh, uh, what was I saying? Jeez, I don't know. Oh, yeah, okay. About the, uh, about the Kawaii Horror is, um, like, I, I like that book, and you, you guys know that I'm into the, um, horror and the weird, the gothic, you know, like, I wouldn't specifically call myself a horror fan, like, I, I'm a fan of classic horror, I'm not a fan of gore, um, I think that you can have a horror movie and not have a single drop of blood, 
and it can still be scary. In fact, that's the best. Um, if you look at Psycho, which is one of, if the very first time you watch Psycho is like the best time. Every other time I've watched it since, it's kind of been noticing, now I see it more from a filmographer's point of view. I'm, I'm noticing angles and shadows and I always do that with black and white movies anyways because that's why I like film noir is because I like the way that when it's not that black and white movies were just in black and white. I've totally changed topic here. Hope I can remember that I'm talking about Jade Summer. <laughs> is that, um, you know, black and white movies weren't just in black and white because they didn't have color. When color became invented, like, I mean, you know, The Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind were filmed in the 30s, but color didn't become uh, popular until the 60s. And then in the 60s, you find um, a lot of atmospheric movies are still in black and white because you know, how were they going to get the atmosphere with with shadows if, you know, they were filming in color? You just, you just can't get the shadow. Sometimes I watch mo modern movies, like in black and white movies, and, you know, when it's supposed to be, when it's supposed to be, you know, atmospheric and, and you know, tension-filled and all that kind of thing, it's dark. It's a night you can hardly see. I find I find myself like moving my screen around all over the place, adjusting my light level so that I can like actually see what's happening. But you know, they filmed it that way because they wanted to use the dark. And you just can't do it like you can in a black and white movie. Yeah, big fan of black and white movies. So, <laughs> back to the Jade Summer book. Um, yes, I think I want that a little darker in there. And when I bought the line art, I was looking to see when it was, too. It was back in March when it came out. So it was this year, in March, it came out in line art. And, I mean, of course I wanted to have it right away. I actually have not even colored in it, but that's another story. Okay, if you're new here, hi, my name is Nikki and I'm a book turner. So yeah, that's just the way it is here. Um, but you know, I wanted it to, even if I didn't, I didn't color in it right away. I've looked at it multiple times and that's one of that's one of the things that my coloring book collection is. I mean some of you may think that I have an astronomical amount of coloring books and um, I do have a lot but um, there are certainly many many colorists out there that have more <laughs> than I do. So I don't feel like I'm excessive at all. I am uh, getting to a point though, and this this brings this is connected to the what I'm talking about. I'm getting to the point where I'm gonna have to start considering my options because if you look at my um, room tour, which I did, uh, I did for a tag. I actually showed you my whole my whole room with the shelves. Um, that white cube unit is one, two, three, four. Okay, so it's four by four cubes. And then I have two, two by two, uh, sorry, two by one cubes uh, that are on top of each other. So that's an extra four. So that's uh, 16 uh, and four is 20. So that's 20 cubes that I have. And with the books just standing up singular, um, I'm starting to get close to the shelves being filled 
and that's kind of the space that I've allotted myself for my collection. Um, and you know, I still have uh, one, two, I have two completely empty uh, shelves and I have um, the other shelves right now I've uh, reshelved them all and spread them out so that there's room on every shelf to add more books so that I don't have to like m move everything from the end over <laughs> every time I get new books okay somebody's arm is there all right that's this girl she's all over the place so it's time for me to start to start deciding what I'm going to do when space is an issue and that comes to what I'm thinking about with the uh, gothic uh, not gothic um, the kawaii horror is do I buy the grayscale like I usually do in book form, which in Canadian dollars is twelve ninety nine. Or do I buy the uh, PDF version, which is only four ninety nine US, which equals about seven dollars Canadian. Now, there, I didn't do any shading on this part. Where's my black? I've got to stop throwing it away. There we go. Do you do that when you're doing pencils? You just... <laughs> just drop my pencil. Throw it over there. Yeah, I do that all the time. That's why um, it's good to have hexagonal pencils. Then they don't roll away on you. Because I just start, I just, you know, the pencils start flying <laughs> as I, <laughs> as I color. I do it with my markers, too. And I, I guess they're, they fly even faster because, you know, it's faster to marker color. So I don't know which to buy. Oh, it's Prime, it's the second day of Prime Days here where I'm, where I'm, uh, the day here that I'm filming, and Canada has nothing. Amazon Canada has nothing that I need to rush out and buy. Um, Ohuhu has their markers on sale, but it's only 20%, so instead of $154 for the set I want to get, it's only 100 and. 30 something yeah it's you know I mean 25 20 25 bucks is is a is a, a big deal oh well, well I mean it's a deal it's not a big deal you know it would be like rush rush out there and have to get them if they were down to a hundred You get good de deals in the States because you have such a big population. There's more competition and, you know, Amazon knows you have other places to go. Even though you do go to Amazon the most, they have to get your, get your c customer, consumerism, <laughs> I guess is the word. And, uh, and then they have to make you buy. So they can afford to, or they have to, to keep your sales. But here in Canada, we don't have anywhere else to go. The only other player in the game of books is, is a national book chain called Chapters Slash Indigo. And there's no shading on this part. I got it on the trap doors. Oh. I think I'm going to go over each one of those lines. So, um, yeah, and, I mean, they don't sell 
they only sell, they sell books and they sell like gift store stuff. But they don't, they don't sell any, they don't sell any craft stuff or, they don't, they don't even sell coloring books. It's like ridiculous. I mean, they do have some, you know, like if, uh, well, you know, they, they, they probably sell Kirby's and, and, um, Camilla Derrico's. They don't have any online because I checked and they, they don't even have Creative Haven. Believe that? But, um, so I'm just, I'm, I'm shading on the top and as we go along, it'll be the left and then it'll be the bottom as we go over there. Um, just to, you know, hopefully make it look a little better than straight coloring. I need to turn the book again. Um, yeah, so I don't even know why I'm talking about this. Oh, just that, you know, it's no, it's no big deal. You know, like Jade Summer isn't on sale. I don't know if they're on sale on dot com but you know there's no there's no coloring books on sale there's a few th I noticed a few things that had gone down a few percents or cents but nothing nothing there's nothing that would make me run out and buy anything So, so anyways, I think I'm over the, the dilemma with the Jade Summer. I'm going to buy the book because I think I'm going to buy all the books of Jade Summer that are in grayscale so that I can actually have the book. I do have issues about what it would be like to print the, the grayscale as well, like with the uh, ink lift. I do have a laser jet, so I'm thinking no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't link because, I mean, that's basically what, uh, mainstream books are printed on, you know, mega laser action going on there in the printing. So, yeah, I, ha I do have the issue, but I think I, I think that's, it's needless. But... Now, the thing that really gets to me is that Jade Summer, and they do this with, with all their books that they grayscale. They publish it in line art, and then six or seven months later, they publish it in grayscale. And you can't tell me that when they publish the line art, they know they're going to be publishing a grayscale. Right then and there, they do. I wouldn't believe different. They would not like be humming and hawing over whether they should. They know darn well <laughs> which books sell in grayscale. So, so it gets me that they don't tell us. We have. I think I'm coming off of the thing. Okay, where do I need to be? I need to lean to this. Oh, jeez, I need to lean, lean to the right. It hurts so much to lean to the right. I have, I, and I need to do it because I have this lean. Oh, what's that? I got a bit of a scratch on this. Okay. It looks like there was a little, little bit of hard lead or something in that. It gave it a bit of a, gave it a bit of a scratch. Um, yeah, so it's fine now. It's not scratching at all. Um, yeah, okay, so I like the way it's looking with this blending into the black. Then it, like, is looking more, like, realistic metal that's, you know, flown through space and got knocked about. So, you know, uh, 
when I saw the Grayscale line art come out, like, I was really excited, just like everybody else that likes Grayscale about the book, you know? I mean, I color line art, no problem. I'm just wondering if that is... Yeah, okay, that looks fine. Um, and, you know, it's got such cute pictures, and it's, you know, my style. I think I'm just going to put this up over there a bit. Got my laptop underneath of this. Um, so, you know, you buy it. And, you know, the months go by and months go by and it doesn't get grayscaled. So, you know, you feel all right about it. And then all of a sudden they come out with the grayscale edition. So, you know, they're making us buy the book twice. Because um, if you're a Jade Summer Grayscale, fan and I know there's a lot of you then you are not you are going to buy the grayscale no matter what you may not have bought the line art edition like I didn't buy the chibi horror edition for the longest time because they were grayscaling old books and you know I just knew that it would have to come eventually. And it did. But, uh, yeah, the, what they need to do, but I don't know if they'll do it because uh, I actually raised this on the, on the, uh, on their Facebook group. I probably should have started a new thread about it, but I made the comment under the book that um, they needed to come up with a solution to um, making their Grayscale fans buy the line art and then someday buying the Grayscale when it comes out. They need to either publish the two together at the same time, and I understand that it takes more work and longer to make the Grayscale edition because they they have to color it. It has to be colored so that they can grayscale it. So, you know, the they can have the line art ready and be waiting on the grayscale because, you know, it needs that extra work going into it. And I'm even okay with the grayscales costing more than the line art because more work does go into it. I mean, it's not like they're, it's not like their grayscale is being hand colored none of their work it's done by hand you can tell by the art that it's all that it's all computer generated and i'm not saying anything against that because the obviously i like computer generated art <laughs> to you know a degree in my coloring books for sure so you know i understand that but um, they need to let us know that, you know, here's the line art and we will be coming out with the grayscale in about six to seven months. Or they can print it. They can print them both at the same time. They can, you know, get a new edition ready in line art and then wait until they've got the grayscale edition ready so that they can print it at the same time and instead of giving us duplicates of the line art and duplicates of the grayscale they could just give us one of each and people would still have a duplicate if they wanted it and but you know they'd have to color it in line art or grayscale depending on you know which is their second choice but i think that the majority of people would be happy to share the space in one book. Yes, there are diehard Jane, Jane, da, Jane, Jade Summer. I was going to say Jane Davenport then. I don't know why. Um, oh, I forgot some down here. Uh, Jade Summer, people who, you know, have been with them since the beginning and they don't like all these changes. But, you know, Unfortunately, things change. There's lots of things that I wish hadn't changed, but they did, and well, nothing I can do about it except, you know, it, keep things the way I want them in my world, and and the rest of the world just, um, you know, 
accept it and get on with my life. But, yeah, they do. They do need to do that. I mean, I can't see anybody disagreeing, even if you don't like great grayscale. I'm sure that the average person wouldn't care less about half of the book being each because I mean in honestly with what I've heard from people most people either couldn't care less about there being two copies of the of the picture or or they don't like it you know there are not very many people who want every single book they have to have double pages because they might want to color it a second time I mean, I think that's, I think that's so fake when, when that is said. I mean, if you're the type of person who colors pictures more than once, you're going to photocopy it. You're going to make yourself a copy. I mean, I know, I, I know YouTubers who do that, who photocopy their pages, and they do like to do it more than once. So yeah, those are the two solutions I see anyways, because grayscale people are buying two books, and then when they buy the grayscale, they have absolutely no use for the line art, and they're stuck with two copies of the pages. So in reality, if you buy the line art version, and then seven months later, you buy the grayscale version, you now have four copies of the picture. Oh. It just frustrates me so much. And it's a waste. I really would like the double pages because, um, like, I mean, like the, um, grayscale and the line art version. But you know what I really like? is how um, Hannah Lynn, and I only have a couple of her books, but I like the way that Hannah Lynn is now doing, is now doing, um, okay, so I think this is going to be my last row, because it's like the outside rim, so it could be like the end of the bottom, it could be the start of the top as well, but I'm going to go this way, so this will be my last ring where I do the blue. And, um, yeah, I think I've said everything. <laughs> oh my goodness. Was that a rant? Did I rant? <laughs> oh dear. Hope it didn't make anybody angry, but, oh well. <laughs> That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. But anyways, guys, I can't believe it. It's been 43 minutes, and I need to cut this, or else I won't be able to log in again. My, if I go for, I feel like I could go for another, I don't know. I have nothing else to talk about, so I guess that's maybe why I got onto that topic, because it was really cheesing me off the other day. <laughs> so I haven't bought it yet. I haven't bought the, yeah, and I never even finished, I, like, I was all over the place there. I never finished my thought on, um, on what I'm going to do with my collection. You know what, I'm going to write, make a note of that, so I don't forget, um, so I can continue on with that next time, next time I... I log in for this vlog. So I'm going to call it a close and um, I will come back on at least one more time. And I will do something different because um, I never, I never work on, I always like to show you two different things on a vlog. So uh, yeah, I guess for you guys, it's going to be a minute. So I'll see you in a minute. Hello, this is Nikki. Oh, I don't need to do that. This is part two. I'm logging in. 
So today is Saturday and I have left this quite late, I must say. I, and I don't really know why. It's uh, just after five o'clock in the evening. My husband left to go to work about half an hour ago. My son is in his room playing video games, I assume, like usual. And I am finally getting down to recording this. It has taken... When did I, when did I log in? Did I wait until Thursday? I think that might be the reason why it's taken me so long to do this one. It's because I didn't really have anything to say yesterday. Or was it Wednesday? I don't know. I can't keep track of days at all, so <laughs> there's no point in me trying. Okay, so I think we're good. I can't seem to see the... Oh, if I lean back, I can see the camera better. Okay, so yeah, everything looks good. I am working in one of my new books from this month, Happy Halloween by Coloring Book Cafe. It was their la latest book as of this recording. And I have to check and see if they came out with a new one this week. Uh, I don't think they did. I think they're all wrapped up in their... They're doing some sort of online course. <clears throat> For coloring skills or something. But yeah, not something I'm interested in. Whoops, wrong end. So, this is one of the pictures that I picked for my Halloween Color It to tag. And I have actually been coloring those pictures that I picked. I've been coloring them like a storm. I, I've colored all the pictures out of the book, out of the uh, new this month's books that I picked pictures out of. And I have one, two, three, four. This is almost done. And so I've, I guess I have, I'm halfway done. So uh, who knows if I will finish these by the end of the month. If I do finish them, and they're all in my October finished pages. I'm not going to do a separate video for them. I'll just do them all together and describe it that way. Boy, this is a tiny guy. Just going to have to kiss the paper. I'm now just going to have to close that mass his legs. I don't think I'll be able to even get in between that with the background marker. Uh, yeah, so I thought I would um, start kind of where I left off uh, at uh, just a moment ago because it is an issue that I want to get sorted in my mind. I was talking about how I need to come to a decision about where I'm going to go from this point on with my coloring book collection, because asking me to just not buy any more books is like asking the sun not to shine. It's just it's nature. <laughs> It's going to happen, no matter what. <laughs> and if I don't buy coloring books, I'll buy way too many coloring supplies. I pretty much have the supplies I need of, like, new things. I, um, I do need to, like, you know, uh, get more. Now, this... This is where I didn't know where to go with this picture, is should I do the background first or should I do the, do the cobweb first? Because I'm going to do the cobweb with the silver uh, sparkle pop. And, well, that will go over 
the acrylic paint because I'm going to use an orange Posca for the background. So this may leak onto the lines, but I think I can go over it. I'm not really too concerned. The, the, I just opened, I just took the plastic off of this. This has never been used before, so I have to shake it within an inch of its life, and then I have to prime it. So if I did the Sparkle Pop first, I'm not really concerned about going out of lines. And if I did, this would go over it. But I am concerned that this would go get into the glitter or the gel pen. And that would just mess it up. So yeah, I'm going to do this first. So um, I'll just reiterate what I've probably already said on... Uh, on the first part there, but and this is just to get it all straight. Wow, did that ever start fast? Holy, I barely needed priming. All right, well, let's just start at the top and work our way down. Sorry, this is probably going to be boring coloring for you to watch, but at least I've got something to talk about. So, I have the space set out for where my coloring book collection goes and it's a large space but it is getting close like this isn't an immediate problem I have it's one that is coming in the future in the near in the near future and I need to have it settled in my mind what I'm going to do because I won't be able to fit any more books on the bookshelves I, I have cubes on the cubes that I have set for them unless I push all the back books that are on the shelves now to the end and start doing like pushing them back and then doing a second layer in front of them that is possible the only problem with that is you can't see my books and it will be hard for me to get to my books. Well, let's face it, it's not going to be hard, it's just going to be annoying. So, I mean, I've done that before with reading books. I don't have reading books in the house anymore. It was the first time in my life that I haven't, but I've just pretty much graduated to the ebook format because of uh, ease of reading. I was one of these people who, like, did not have an e-reader until everybody was reading, had e-readers, and if not an e-reader, at least you had an app on your device. So that's like one of the last people to get a Kindle. And I swore up and down that, you know, ebooks just weren't for me and I was never going to read an ebook that, because I love books, you know, the actual physical beings that are books, well, not beings, but you know what I mean, that are books. I love them to death, but uh, my whole life has always been surrounded by books. I've always had a book collection and I've always had an extensive, uh, over some people would say overboard collection of books right from when I was a kid and my dad made bookshelves on my walls so that I could have as many books as possible and uh, yeah so now my collection has gravitated towards a coloring book collection so I could double up and you know, it really helps saying this stuff out loud because it um, makes it makes it more real. It just helps me decide actually saying it out loud. Um, so yeah, I could do that. It, I wish I didn't have to because of the look. So. You know, let's say I, I did that, but I saved it for, 
for, um, you know, the, the special books. So then the other thing that I was thinking of was, was uh, switching to PDFs. Now, I have never bought a PDF book. Oh, no. No, because I won that. Wait, I have I have two Deborah Muller ones. I won one. Uh, what did I did I buy the other? I didn't. Unless did I win it? You know I do. I have two Deborah Muller PDFs, and I won them both. That's right. I did. Okay. So yeah, I have never bought a PDF book in my life. I have a few PDF books, but that's because that they were given away for free. And I have PDFs, but they're all freebies. And I'm always looking at uh, Dover's uh, freebies, but they don't—they don't email me every time. Sometimes I find out that they've that they've listed the new books and I haven't gotten the email and then it's a special link so if you're not emailed the link you don't get the you can't get to them so that's annoying but yeah uh, when I go to Dover when they have their freebie pages I always go there I guess it's what twice a month um, I go there and I take a look and I see if there's any that I want. It's becoming fewer and fewer that, that I do want, but anyways, back to the topic. Oh, I, like, I just run off at the mouth. I just, like, once, like, I'm a very shy person and one, th this is actually pretty good for me to be talking to myself and, like, actually not just talking to myself <laughs> because I do talk to myself like m when my sister is with me she's learned to just ignore me and my husband has to extent as well because I'm always sitting there and I have a continuous I have a continuous run of babble coming out of my mouth as I because I'm talking to myself now, usually people can tell if I'm talking to myself or if I'm talking to them because I have a, uh, like, a, well, I don't have a, anything. I, um, I mumble when I talk to myself. And I've listened back to the videos on here and I've noticed myself doing it too. So if you're listening to me and then I suddenly say something like a lot quieter than my normal tone, it's because I'm mumbling to myself. So yeah, I, I can't stop myself from doing it. So, um, hmm, what led me to talking about that? And then I was saying that it was good for me to talk to the camera. Oh, that it was good for, I see, and now I'm going backwards in the conversation. <laughs> okay, yeah. So this was helping me make my decision. So the, the thing is, is I was thinking about PDFs, but then, of course, not being a PDF person, I have all sorts of questions and wonderings as to whether this will work for me because all the PDFs that I have right now are printed out and are in, uh, not binders, but in the uh, display books, which... Um, you've seen before on my channel here and um, next time I show them I'll make a point of telling people what they are but um, because just like with anything else that I've kept on my computer if it's not in sight I don't I don't have it it's just you know it doesn't exist if I don't see it it doesn't exist and I'm like that with other things in my life too um, you know, if, if I have something that I need to use tomorrow, I need to put it out where I will see it because otherwise it just, it just doesn't exist. I know it sounds silly, but, um, I think it's part of my Asperger's 
and uh, you know it's just one of those things because my son is like that too and you all know he's autistic so um, yeah so um, what am I gonna do like how is that gonna save space if I start buying PDF but they're all printed out yeah I think it would save space because if I had five uh, Jade Summer books and I'm not gonna buy the grayscale ones on PDF I collect those and that's just the way that is but well and I'm not gonna buy patterns on PDF either because or color by numbers because I just I don't want to be printing out that kind of stuff so that uh, Jade Summer wasn't a good example um, if I have five Deborah Muller books on the shelf, I think that if I had five PDFs printed out on the shelf, it would take up less room. No, it wouldn't because, well, yeah, but that would be expensive. Sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking and answering my questions myself. Um, yeah, it's really hard to think. Like, I have to print them out. I can't see me not. One thing my sister suggested was... Oh, sorry, I'm coloring. One thing my sister suggested was to um, just print out the covers. And then that way I would know what books I had. Well, the thing about that is that... I think, I've seen a few, and I think that when you buy a PDF, you don't get the cover or the back cover. So, that's not going to make that doable. And then she suggested printing out like three pages, but then I wouldn't know what books they came from. Because, um... Or at least I'm presumed. Well, I know that a lot of stuff that I print out as freebies doesn't say what it is on the bottom. I don't know how the illustrators plan to get plan to get promoted if they don't put who they are on the bottom of the page. I always try to remember to write it down, but my printer is in a different part of the house than than my computer, so you know sometimes. I've forgotten who it is by the time I get to it. So, yeah, so there's that. Now, if I just kept them on the computer, the PDFs on the computer, yes, it would save space. But I just don't know. I don't like the idea of having them... Like, I love looking at my books on the shelf, and, and you know, then there's the thing like this, like what I'm doing right here, the Halloween color it tag. I would not have been able to go through my books and pick out the pictures and then choose to color those pictures, you know, choose to pick, to color those pictures. In the future and, and and it would make doing any kind of scavenger tags difficult because then you'd have to like go through your PDFs and you'd have to print out that page and then you know you wouldn't have anything to show anybody what book it was you know it just it just isn't possible so what I have with the two well no I have more than two because Sunlight Drawing has their um, 40 uh, their sampler book is available by PDF, and that's free. I have that, and, and I haven't printed it out because, and I don't know if I ever will, because I just have no desire in printing out um, color by numbers. I just don't feel like they're they're kind of like throwaway books, you know. They're all about the process. They're not about the picture. It's kind of, you know, it's nice to have a pretty picture when you're done, but to me, they're all about doing it. And 
you know, that's another thing that I have to come up with is what am I going to do with my finished books? I've got, I've got um, 11 of them now. You'll have seen this last week that I, that I put up to that I had finished. And um, next year, I'm going to be participating. Uh, I didn't participate this year, even though I had wanted to last January, but I just didn't want to do the book that they picked. But I'm going to be participating in um, Your, Gr Your Girl Tees um, book color along group where the whole group gets together and works on um, completing a book. And this year, they've voted on um, Geomorphia by Kirby Rosanna's. Now, that's not the book I voted for, <laughs> because this is going to be quite the challenge for me. I have only ever completed one double-page spread of Kirby Rosanna's. I love his books. I buy them all because I love the art, and I dream of doing them, but they just... It just feels too much like work <laughs> to, like, actually do them. You know, I have all these dreams of doing an acrylic wash or doing a watercolor wash and then, you know, using all sorts of, all sorts of acrylic paints and watercolor paints and all my different kinds of media that I have and finally just doing some detailing with with uh, pencils or you know just going over areas that look a little rough or whatever with pencils and you know I mean I know how <laughs> I know how I'm going to do them in my head <laughs> that's what I do when I look at the books and I do that a lot with my coloring books is that I'll be I'll look at them and in my head I'll be telling myself how I'm going to do how I'm going to do the pictures and uh, yeah so you know the coloring book collection like I try to tell some people is and you know I like to repeat this on on my channel because people get um, worried about having too many coloring books and I mean I know you guys call me an enabler because of my of my hauls every month and yeah I mean I am in the sense that I get enabled when I watch other people's hauls it's just you know if you like to buy the stuff that the person's showing then yeah you're gonna go out and buy something if it tickles your fancy but I don't want to be an enabler in the sense where I tell people it's okay to buy coloring books. But don't feel guilty. You know, I mean, don't spend more than you can afford. But I don't want you to do that. But if you can afford it, uh, coloring book collecting is, is honestly, and I mean, it's not a joke, even though we can say it as a joke. But coloring book collecting is an entirely different hobby to um, coloring. You know, the uh, coloring is a, um, well, it's art or a craft, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, it's, one, it's one or the other. You're actually physically making something creative with your hands. You're sitting down and doing it, but you wouldn't have anything to color if you didn't buy coloring books. And so then you get your love for coloring books and you start becoming interested in art. And you buy books that you like the art of. And so then you end up buying coloring books not just to color in or but to look at because you like looking at art that you enjoy. And um it's just, it's a different hobby. That's one that's pleasurable to the senses, the coloring book collection. Like I said, I've always collected books right from when I was a kid. Like, I mean, my dad was a huge book person, and he always had books in the house. And he had books that he hadn't read. So, you know, um, I learned it from him. 
that you didn't have to read all the books you had is when you when it was time to read you had a selection to choose from you didn't have to go outside your home to find a book to read because you'd already you'd already got all these books to read so I don't know if that's making sense it makes sense to me and it's the same with people who have other hobbies too I mean sometimes a person's hobby is just collecting the item like um, well there's um, mostly it's men but um, people let's say collect um, model railway stuff and you know they have the setups in their house of their model trains and you know they actually collect the trains and the tracks and the pieces and the parts for it and everything but they will also have an extensive collection of books on the topic probably on both I know there's magazines that are published every month uh, for them and so they'll have a collection of the magazines they'll probably have a subscription to a couple but they'll also have books on historical trains so that they like know something about trains because i imagine that's part of the that's part of the hobby so i don't know what you think but i just think that coloring books are yes we need them to color but you don't you can have more than you can color in and it's perfectly okay because if you're collecting them and then the time comes for you to color a picture well you have your collection you don't have to go searching on Etsy looking for a page to print out that attracts you you've got your whole collection in front of you and you can peruse it and browse it and spend time getting to know it while you pick a picture that you're going to color next or you can pull out a certain few books and say well i'm going to work in these ones this month you know it, they, they go hand in hand but they're separate hobbies So that brings me back to, to my dilemma, is that I think I will be losing the aesthetic value of collecting coloring books if I go to PDFs. But then I'm always brought back to the situation of, well, if I'm not going to do PDFs, where the heck am I going to put all these coloring books? <laughs> I mean, I have to have room for my supplies, too. So, you know, this is basically the space that I have made for my books is basically the space that I have. I don't have anywhere else to put them. And if I, if I spread out of this room, my husband will kill me. Like, he is not a book person at all. He does all his reading on the computer, and he only reads... Well, we've already talked about what a big sports fan he is, so 75% of what he reads is, is uh, sports, and the rest of it will be current events. And he's not even that interested in that anymore. It's funny how the older we become, the less interested in current events we become. I don't know if that's just us. I don't know. It's the people we know, too. I think it's a thing. Because my husband will be 60 next year in 2021. He's quite a few years older than me. Not Well, you know. He's, what, seven years older than I am, so I'm in the beginnings of my 50s. In case anyone didn't know, I know I've mentioned my age on here before, but I don't do it very often. I have a young-sounding voice that I, I've been told, and oh, I know I do too, because I was in my 30s when people would, when I would answer the phone and people would ask to speak to my mother. 
<laughs> and I'd say, my mother is dead. Can I help you? <laughs> that, that would startle them. Yeah. So, I like to think that I'm young at heart, though. Well, I know I am, because I know, there's some people who think I'm immature. But I don't think you have to, like, act your age. I mean, what is that, anyways? I mean, what... What does a 30-year-old act like? What does a 40-year-old, a 50-year-old, a 60-year-old, what do they act like? I think, I think as soon as you're, you're in your 20s, there is no way to act for your age. Except for, you know, behaving like a grown-up. An adult. Well, there's a lot of a lot of youngsters who act like they're children instead of adults. I mean, I'm talking about, you know, kids in their 30s who still live at home and stuff. Well, yeah, okay, enough said about that. <laughs> Don't try to go anywhere controversial, Maggie. Um, yeah, so if you've got some advice as to my coloring book dilemma, I would appreciate it. Some ideas on how to handle having PDFs instead of books. How can I get to them? How can I, like, know what I have? Or how to handle getting more books than will fit on this bookcase. Do I push them back and double stack them? Because then that that kind of takes away from the 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 um, attractiveness of collecting, and it kind of turns the collecting into hoarding. Because if they aren't nicely on display and they're just hidden behind one another, you know what's the beauty in that? But I'll say, I've done it. I've done it a lot with all my books. I used to collect graphic novels and manga. And you can believe me that my manga was double. <laughs> double stacked. It was even triple stacked with, with ones laying on top. And there was as many as would fit in a row. Because, I mean, some of those series have, like, enormous amounts of volumes in one series. I still have a good portion of the collection. It's relegated to one bookcase now. That was hard. It's hard when you have to downsize a collection. Oh, and that's another thing that I want you to know, is that I don't need to go through my collection and downsize it, because I already have. Um, when I started... When I started book tubing, the very first thing I did was went through my books because at that time they weren't a collection. It was just a bunch of books that I had bought over the years um, that were coloring books. And, you know, it was, and they were all books from that stage when you buy everything you see because you don't know what you like yet. So, yeah, there was lots of. There was lots of um, zen doodly stuff that just wasn't me. And, and, you know, other books that weren't me. That were perfectly good books, they just weren't me. So I've already been through them all, and I was, uh, I was tough on keeping books. So, every book I have has been curated for my collection. 
Um, I'm in the process of coloring a picture in every book that I have. And I'm up to J. I'm working right now on, on coloring in all the newer books that I've received between A and J. And um, then I'll be on my way because I'm going through the alphabet so that I just go through my books. That's how I have them. That's how I have them um, on my shelves. They're alphabetical. Well, first of all, I have a little section up on top for my small books. And then the very first thing that's on my shelf is uh, uh, oversized books. Most of those are laying on their sides. And then I have a section. Then the next section is my hardcovers. And those all go together. Then everything else is sorted by uh, alphabetically. And that's alphab uh, alphabetically by um, author or collection. So I have a, all my Deborah Muller books are, are filed under M. But then all my Creative Haven books are filed under C. And so if I have Marty Noble book that isn't a Creative Haven book, it goes under N. So Marty Noble will be will be uh, in two places. But if I collect, I don't collect Marty Noble books. I just happen to get them because she has done a lot of coloring books. But if I actively collected Marty Noble, then I would have a section for her books and the Creative Haven books that were by, well, were by her would be in a different section. And, and an example of this is Angela Porter. I collect Angela Porter, but she uh, does books for Creative Haven. So the Creative Haven books I have that are by Angela Porter are not in the Creative Haven section. They're under P for Porter. Hope that makes sense. And then when I come to um, a series or uh, whether you want to call it a series or an author like Jade Summer, I put that under J for Jade because that's that's how it's recognized. It's a company name. It's not a person's name. So, you know, you don't put, um, you don't put, uh, oh, I can't even think of a company that's a person's name. Yeah, no, not coming to me. But yeah, if you have a company that is a person's name, you don't, um, split up the company's name and file it under the the person's last name, you file it by the first letter of the first word, which just happens to be a name. I think I'm starting to ramble. I'm starting to ramble. Uh, how much time have we got here? 38, and I think my other one was 45. So, an hour and a quarter. I think we're probably going to be at about an hour and 20 minutes. My last couple of videos. My last video. And I'm getting tired. My eyes are getting droopy. So, I think I'm going to call this it. I ended up talking on and on about the one subject. So, I hope that that wasn't boring for you. I had planned on talking about more issues, and I had thought that I would get this finished, but <laughs> I'm nowhere near finished it. It's going to take me a while to color this background. So, yeah, I think I'm going to close it for this week. So, I hope you all have a good week ahead of you. Um, any help with anything that I've asked you throughout, uh, throughout this, uh, vlog on the first entry and this entry, I appreciate your, uh, opinions down below.
as usual, I love to hear stories about what you're doing while you're listening to this. And if you're not coloring, go ahead and tell me what you're doing, but I'd also like to know what your current picture is that you're coloring. Whether you're working on it now or not. Uh, yeah, that's what I would like to know. What everybody's working in now that it's coming the end of October and I know a lot of people are getting out of the out of the uh, Halloween out of the Halloween mood personally I'm still right in the middle of it uh, October um, November for me is going to be finishing up Halloween coloring and starting Christmas coloring so there'll be a bit of both so um, yeah yeah, definitely interested in that. So I'm going to say goodbye. And as usual, take care. And stay safe. So, in the meantime, until next time, guys. I love you. Bye-bye.